Matthew 11, 2-15 When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? Um, a prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not, a reason, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. John the Baptist is the distant cousin of Jesus. He preaches and baptizes people at the River Jordan. He becomes a superstar preacher. He preaches baptism for the forgiveness of sins. He also pronounces judgment against people who sin. He preaches against King Herod. King Herod steals his brother Philip's wife. King Herod puts him in prison. While he is in prison, he starts to have doubts about Jesus being the Messiah, the one who is to come. Old Testament Israel has been waiting for a king. At the time of Jesus, they hoped that this person would liberate them from Roman rule. Matthew 11, 2-3 When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect? someone else. Are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? I grew up in a family with mental illness. Both my parents suffered from different forms of mental illness. Both my parents believed in Jesus as Lord and Savior, yet their behaviors affected my brother and me. It was like being in prison. I doubted if God was working out his best for us in our home situation. I wondered if I could ever be liberated out of that prison. As we come to worship God every Sunday, we come from different homes. And I can understand if some of us have doubts about Jesus or doubts about what God is doing in our lives. John the Baptist starts to have doubts about Jesus. He doubts about Jesus being the one to come. He even goes to the extent of asking if they should expect someone else. What is the reason? behind John's doubts. Let's go back to John's preaching. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you in with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Matthew uh, three eleven to 12 so this is what John preaches. Jesus is going to bring fire. He holds a winnowing fort. He wants to clear his threshing floor. He gathers those who are wheat into a barn. He burns up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Jesus is going to bring judgment. And when he is at the River Jordan preaching, John tells the Jewish religious leaders that they need to get serious about repenting. You Pharisees and Sadducees, get your act together. Repent. God can raise these stones to become the children of Abraham. The fire is going to come. So now John doubts about Jesus being the one to come. Jesus does not bring fire on the Jewish religious leadership. Jesus does not bring fire on the Roman rulers. Instead, what does Jesus do? Jesus gives sight to the blind. Jesus makes the lame to walk. Jesus heals the lepers. Jesus gives hearing to the deaf. Jesus raises people up from the dead. Jesus mixes with the poor, the tax collectors, and the sinners. Are you the one to come or should we expect someone else? 
I have shared about how I felt I was in a prison growing up in a family coping with mental illness. Now, we don't have to be a physical prison to be in a prison. For me, Christmas is the celebration of the greatest gift of all, the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, who comes down to forgive us for our sins and bring us salvation. To celebrate this greatest gift of all, what do we do? We give gifts uh, to each other. We wrap them up and put them under the Christmas tree. However, the wrapping paper of the Christmas gifts is fast becoming an environmental problem. Uh, this is what the Canadian press reported in December 2017. Canadians will send 100,000 elephants worth of wrapping paper to the dam this year and Christmas presents are the big culprit. Zero Waste Canada, a Vancouver-based advocacy group, estimates each Canadian tosses about 50 kilograms of garbage over the holidays, 25% more than the rest of the year, thanks to the purchase of 3,000 tons of foil, 2.6 billion Christmas cards, and 6 million rolls of tape. Altogether, 540,000 tons of wrapping paper and gift bags are thrown out each year. Gift bags, tape, and ribbon are, can't be recycled. Some cities like Toronto will recycle plain paper gift rack, but anything with glitter or velvet or foil on it has to be plucked out. The Director of Solid Waste Management Services for Toronto says they notice an uptick in the curbside waste this time of the year, but handle it without extra trucks or staff. Like most cities, Toronto tries to educate people on what can't and can't be recycled, but the recycling plants still have to include sorting systems where decrepit glittering wrapping paper can be separated from its more environmentally friendly pure paper cousin. We have a contamination challenge here, says the director. So there are suggestions for a greener Christmas. Buy less. Buy smart. Think green. Connect with nature. Lower the impact of holiday lighting. Make homemade cuts. Find alternatives to wrapping paper. Reuse and recycle. Will we be liberated from our consumerist present of Christmas? In some ways, uh, we are all conditioned during Christmas to think more, more, more. So let's go back to John the Baptist. John is in prison. His prison is more than four walls or the bars on the windows. His prison is that he feels that Jesus should be this fire and brimstone preacher who condemns the religious and political readers. Instead, what kind of preacher is Jesus? Matthew eleven four to five, Jesus replied, "Go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and good news is proclaimed to the poor." We put Christmas in a box. We try to maintain the nice Christmas tree and that wonderful Christmas dinner. John tries to put Jesus in a box. Jesus is not a fire and brimstone preacher. Instead, what does Jesus do? Jesus gives sight to the blind. Jesus makes the lame to walk. Jesus heals the lepers. Jesus gives hearing to the blind. Jesus raises people from the dead. Jesus mixes with the poor, the tax collectors, and the sinners. Are you the one to come or should we expect someone else? Matthew 11 verse 6, Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Do not be offended by me, John. I'm going to do what I'm called to do. I have come to give sight to the blind, to make the lame to walk, to heal the lepers, to give hearing to the blind, to raise people from the dead, and to mix with the poor, the tax collectors, and the sinners. I am called to preach the good news to the poor. So what is Jesus' priority? Has he come to fulfill John's expectations or our expectations? Or has Jesus come to fulfill his calling? Last week we mentioned 
that the prophecies of the Old Testament are fulfilled by Jesus. Old Testament Israel has been waiting for 1,000 years for Jesus Messiah to arrive. Christmas is a time in which we celebrate how the New Testament fulfills the Old Testament. John, don't stumble on account of me. I am fulfilling what Isaiah said about me. Don't forget what we learned at Torah school. I am fulfilling Isaiah 61 verse 1. Isaiah 61 verse 1. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release from darkness for the prisoners. Christmas is about the greatest gift of all, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not about Christmas trees, Christmas dinners, and Christmas presents. Jesus is the Messiah whom the Sovereign Lord has anointed to proclaim good news to the poor and to release prisoners from darkness. Are you the one to come or should we expect someone else? As we come to this Christmas and to worship God on this Sunday, I can understand if some of us have doubts about Jesus, about what God is doing in our lives. Will I get a job in 2020? Will I experience healing? Can I ever get over this relational problem in my life? And so Christmas is a time when we truly think of ourselves as, as the blind, the lame, the deaf, the sick, the poor, the least in the kingdom of heaven that Jesus has come to save. Do we need Jesus in our lives? Jesus has come to save us. Jesus has come to heal us. Jesus has come to liberate us from our prisons. On November the 2nd, South Africa won the Rugby World Cup this year in a historical fashion. They became to the first team to win the cup despite losing a game in the pool stage. It was also historical because it was held in Asia for the first time. Japan got as far as the quarterfinals and were beaten by South Africa. South Africa was not always allowed to compete in the World Cup. They were banned from the 1987 and 1991 World Cups because of apartheid. Then in 1995, they hosted the Rugby World Cup and managed to enter the final. Nelson Mandela was then the president of South Africa. Rugby was always regarded as a game in which South African whites played. The black population followed soccer more than rugby. Nelson Mandela walks into the stadium wearing the South African Springboks jersey in the final. He wears the number six jersey, which is the number of Francois Pinar, the captain. Nelson Mandela wants to show that in this new Africa, all can play rugby, black or white. They need longer to be enclosed in their narrow prisons. Pina cannot believe his eyes when he sees Mandela wearing his number six jersey into the cup final. Mandela will become godfather to his two sons. The moment that Mandela wore that jersey in 1995 is captured in the 2009 movie Invictus. Nelson Mandela wants to bring the whites and the blacks of South Africa together. He doesn't want them to live in their prisons. Invictus is a poem by William Ernest Hanley. Mandela explains in the movie that reading this poem while often in prison was one way for him to keep his head high and follow his beliefs. Here is the poem. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced or cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the manners of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. 
I am the captain of my soul. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged the punishments the scroll. I am the master of my own fate. I am the captain of my soul. And when he left prison, Mandela uttered these words. I, as I walked up the door to the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave the bitterness and the hatred behind, I would still be imprisoned. And so this Christmas, look beyond the Christmas presents, look beyond the Christmas tree, look beyond the Christmas dinner. Uh, ask Jesus to liberate you from the prisons that you live in. Um, leave the bitterness and the hatred behind.